Hey YouTube, um, just wanted to do another video here about uh, the steel uh, MS210C. Um, I've been kind of kicking myself lately because I've been working on different things and totally forgetting about recording anything about it. And I thought about this last night after I already worked on this, um, figured out the issues it was having and got it running. Um, so I'm gonna try to do more videos. Uh, well, actually, while I'm working on stuff, kind of show you guys a little bit more step by step and things that I had to do to it. But uh, <clears throat> I've been working on like go karts, chainsaws, boat motors, all kinds of diff different stuff. Um, it's just, uh, I guess, I kind of have a knack for uh, maybe it's a learned skill. I don't know of uh, diagnostics and general understanding of mechanics and electronics. But uh, so what we got here is. Um, a chainsaw that a buddy of mine got off of a contractor and um, he felt like he owed me for working on his boat um, I told him he didn't owe me anything I was doing him a favor and and uh, oh we got a chicken photo bombing <laughs> we'll be famous on YouTube um, so Anyways, he ended up bringing me three chainsaws and a concrete cutter. Another one, neither one of them really ran. Um, two steel chainsaws and one Husqvarna, and one Husqvarna is the other Husqvarna is the uh, uh, concrete saw. Um, that one I'm probably gonna wait for like a winter project, tear really tear it apart. The other steel that I have is a 211 MS 211, and that one's just by starting it up and getting it running, I think it's got some bad bearings. So I'll probably have to do a full rebuild on that one. Um, but they're all in pretty decent shape. Um, so the contractor that he bought, there, he got these off of. Um, he told me he's kind of a sucker for the latest and greatest thing. Um, so anytime something would stop working right or would break or whatever, he would usually just set it in his shop and go buy something brand spanking new. So... Hey, I mean, I guess if that's what you want to do with your money. You know, you're totally cool with that. But um, my guess is I had no background on any of these saws. Um, my guess is on this one, he stopped using it because it, it wasn't oiling anymore. Um, when I got it started, it started pretty easy, even without doing any work to it. Um, put fresh gas in it, you know, check the filters. And everything seemed to be okay. Um, and it didn't take much, and I got it started. Uh, didn't have to do any tuning to it. Oh, and there's a kitty. <laughs> video bombing um yeah after running it for about i'd say five minutes i noticed that it was wasn't oiling at all um i took the uh took the barn chain off and i looked right <laughs> hey buddy <laughs> i took the barn chain off and um i ran it for a while and there was no oil at all pumping out of it so <clears throat> the the downside about getting uh, power tools like gasoline powered power tools off of contractors and this isn't any disrespect towards contractors um, but they typically either don't have very many people working for them that care for them the way that they should be um, again that's not a knock on them it's just if you're not used to using something often like a logger or somebody like a tree trimming service who really takes care of their chainsaws or their power tools like that um they don't clean them as often as they should. They don't, you know, do the regular maintenance like they should. And you'll typically get a lot of like basic easy fixes. This particular one, um, <clears throat> it was a little bit of a step-by-step -step process. I had to try to figure out what was going on with the oiling system. Um, so I took off the cap and I drained what little oil was left in it, the barn chain oil. And there was a lot of debris inside there. A lot of like wood chips and grass chips and just a little bunch of junk. I don't know. They must have tried to fill it when they were cutting something um, nearby because there was a lot of stuff in there. Um, that kind of triggered it for me um, that the whole system is probably clogged. So I ended up taking off the barn chain. And inside of here, you can't really see it. It's all covered up now. But um, <clears throat> I tried forcing uh, a little bit of air through there and I wasn't really getting anything with the compressed air so I ended up putting mixed gas in the oil um, and I ran it for a couple of minutes 
and I did finally get some to start flushing through. Um, one little trick you can do is, if you're not getting a heavier bar and chain oil to, to cycle through, to try something of a lower viscosity. Um, maybe, like, maybe like a 20 weight oil, or even like, a, I don't know, something even lighter than that, like a five weight or something. Just try it, see if you can get it to flow. Um, it could be an indicator of maybe a bad oiler, um, or there could just be some stuff that's clogged in there and it's not letting it really flow. In this case, I ended up, <laughs> I ended up taking off the uh, whole bar assembly, uh, handle assembly, and that gave me access to underneath right in here. You can't really see it. It's right there is where the oil comes out and goes through the, to the oiler. Um, I took all of this out and I took the filter, everything out, replaced the filter, and I blew out the hose, pulled it all the way out. I blew out the hose with compressed air and there was a little bit of debris in it, not, not a whole lot. Um, and while I had that all apart, <coughs> I also, with compressed air, blew out underneath here, straight all the way through, and I had to rotate the um, uh, uh, the sprocket while I was doing that to kind of get the piston to flow, and it pushed out some some of the uh, compressed air, and I finally got some of the stuff to start coming out. Um, one thing I noticed too is this little plastic piece. Again, you probably can't really see it real good. There's a kind of a, a clear whitish colored plastic piece in there. There's an O-ring when you when you um, screw it down on there's kind of an o-ring in there that seals it and from the factory that o-ring wasn't on properly and it was kind of smashed against the uh the body so i found an o-ring that was the uh, roughly the same size i put it on there put a little bit of uh, a little oil around it just so it'd slide on the way that it should and seal um i started it up and i had nothing it was still not oiling right um it would oil a little bit but not much um so I forced some more compressed air through it and I kind of primed it. I put some oil in through the, uh, the oil hole that comes out. Again, you, you really can't see it. It's all inside here. Um, and I just kind of let the air bubbles come through and I just let it sit for a little bit. And I started it again and I started to flow and I, I'd rev it a little bit, not, not full speed, but rev it a little bit. And I was getting it to flow a little bit. And then finally it started drawing from the tank. So whatever was in there, uh, must have must have come out and I'm thinking it could have possibly even been airlocked too um, I'm not a chainsaw mechanic. I'm not like some expert on these things um, I'm just kind of your average Joe that kind of knows what he's doing as far as you know small engine stuff and stuff So who knows maybe when I force compress air through there, maybe it blew out a piston inside there Maybe it's not gonna ever work right until I replace it. So I don't know but uh I got all that together and boy was this thing dirty. I don't think this thing had ever really been cleaned right. I mean there was wood wood chips and and uh oil and just everything just caked everywhere. This thing looks like brand new compared to the way it was. Um the uh muffler was really nasty and rusty. I took it off and cleaned it really good. Um and I ended up using some high temperature paint you use for like wood stoves. And uh I replaced the spark plug with a brand new spark plug. <laughs> uh, brand new spark plug, brand new air filter, um, brand new um, gas filter, fuel like fuel pickup, and again, a new oil, uh, oil filter. Um, all the other hoses and everything like, seemed fine. Um, and this thing just started right up. I mean, it, it actually runs pretty good. I did have to do, once I got it, the chain resharpened because it was kind of damaged from probably hitting nails and stuff on a construction job. I got it cleaned up and sharpened, uh, kind of fixed the chain. And uh, I actually got it into some wood where I was cutting some little cookies with some small wood. I had to do a little bit of tuning because uh, when I took the spark plug out, it was like white. Like it was, it had been running kind of lean at high end. Um, so I got it into the wood, cutting it, and I retuned it to where it had a little bit more power. And uh, Got a little bit more fuel at high end uh, when it was running hard. Um, this thing, yeah, things cuts pretty good now. Um, I'm impressed with it. I, I just, I really don't need it. Um, I'm gonna be selling it. Um, I already have like five chainsaws, and most of them are like rebuilt or in immaculate condition. So I really have no need for this guy. Although I really do like this recoil. It's, it's kind of nice. Um, I'll demonstrate it for you. This is. Uh, this is a cold start. I haven't started it at all today. Um, and this is going to be really difficult to do with one hand <laughs> while I'm holding my phone. So let's give this a try. So on these, 
you've got your uh, your handle, which you push down on, and then that frees it up to be able to do the trigger. If you don't, the trigger won't work at all. It's a safety feature. So I'm going to put this down all the way down. So there's choke, and then there's like a you got to do this gently here. There's like a high idle, or like re like a race, and then there's just regular, and then of course off that grounds out the ignition, and turns it off. So we're gonna we're gonna put it all the way down on choke and see if I can demonstrate this. This is not gonna be easy. Pick it up on top of the table here. So you put your foot down in here and you pull. See how it's not really loading up? See how it did that? It like loads up that spring and then that spring releases on it. That's really cool, isn't it? Again, I'm not applying a lot of pressure even to it. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So you can pull it, pull it, and it'll and it loads up. It's kind of cool. All right, I'm gonna try to actually start this now. So I'm gonna put the phone down for a second. out of gas i'm probably out of gas in this thing i forgot i was messing around with it and i drained it uh so that's best the basics of these two tens um i've got let's see i got a husqvarna 455 um which i got too and that one's really nice it's missing some parts though on the uh um the chain brake system so i gotta order all the parts for that um I might keep that one. I don't know. I'll have to see. That's a nice little chainsaw. A little bit bigger than this guy. Uh, well, that's all I got for you guys. Um, sorry for the uh, maybe bad quality of video or whatever. Um, I'm a little bit under the weather today. Uh, I think it's just a sinus infection, but who knows? It's 2020. It could be the Rona. <laughs> I hope not. I was already tested, so... I should have a result here in a day or so. But um, if you guys have any questions or comments, just go ahead and leave them down there. If you like the video, hit the like and subscribe if you want to subscribe and see some more videos like this. Um, again, I'm going to try to start doing more actual hands on stuff instead of just talking you guys through what I did. Um, but when I'm in the moment, I, I don't even think about it. I just start working. So, all right, guys, that's it. Thank you. Have a good rest of the day.